All right, I'm just going to do a quick sound check before we start. I um, just want to make sure that everybody can hear me and that everyone um, can see my screen and see the Mozilla Open Badges um, slide. So if you could just post a note in the chat or in the questions. Okay, great. Sounds like. Um, so first off, thank you very much for joining us today. I know we have a, a few people that are, are starting to join. So I'm just going to do a, a really quick intro before I dive in. Um, so my name is Megan Cole, um, and I run the marketing for Open Badges um, as part of the Mozilla Foundation. Um, and today, basically, we're just going to take a walk through um, very much the general um, overview of Open Badges. So you should leave um, with some key points that you're fueled to you know, answer at the cocktail reception or wherever you are when someone mentions you know, what is open badges, that you, you'll basically have a, a little bit of a pitch and that you yourself can start to think about how open badges um, can ultimately um, be part of your your sector, your community, um, or so forth. So so definitely going to be a general overview today. I would encourage you um, in the question section, um, I have all of the microphones muted just um, to make sure that you guys can hear everything and the fact that we're recording this um, to make sure that you can you can come back at a later time. Um, and so please use the question section. Um, I will be trying to monitor as I go through, but definitely we'll have time um, at the end to ask questions as well. Um, it will probably take me about 35 minutes to walk through everything, so to make sure that we have an opportunity to. Um, I will say that we will be um, circulating a link to the slides as well as the recording um, after today's session, so that we'll, we'll probably go out um, by tomorrow morning at the latest, um, so you can expect to um, get that as well, so that you can um, come back at any time. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and dive in um, and just, you know, overall, again, thank you very much for joining us today. So let's see. Okay, so for today's webinar, we're going to go through um, what is a badge, why open badges, a little bit of detail on what's uh, called our OBI, so that's the open badge infrastructure, um, a look at the current status of the ecosystem, so who's using open badges, um, and really what's next um, up for the open badges team, what are our efforts really going to be um, uh, put in for 2014. So with that, as always, you know, we like to do a little Twitter, um, little Twitter mention that as you're going through, um, make sure to follow us at, at Open Badges. And also if you're if you're tweeting anything to include the hashtag um, pound open badges. Um, also really good um, to do a search for pound open badges. A lot of our community is really active with this hashtag. Um, so just to kind of um, further get involved in what we do. So with that. Diving right in. So what are the problems we need to solve? And I think this question could go across many things, but ultimately as it pertains to open badges, really we're in a state where education and workforce are changing. Um, you know, there's there's tension within both. Um, ultimately, you know, what used to be you came out with a college uh, a college degree, you would get a job and, you know, so forth. It's just there's, there's a lot of change that's going on here. Um, this is a really good quote that kind of demonstrates that where um, it's from um, one of the head of HRs at Google um, that is really basically saying that, you know, just having a GPA and handing in a resume with that does not really do anything for them. Um, they get over thousands of resumes a day. So ultimately, they, they, they really are looking to, to know your ability to perform as opposed to just what you did in college. And so, so really looking for that complete picture of who you are as an individual as opposed to just, you know, I graduated and this is what I got more or less. So tension, um, there's, there's a high amount of tension between economic mobility, innovation, and access. Um, and I think these are, you know, really key buzzwords that I think are very apparent, um, whether you're in any type of industry, whether education and so forth, um, but really there's a lot of pressure going on. And so a good way to take a look at this is really to kind of dive in on a sector base, okay? So we're going to walk through probably about um, four different types of sectors that are feeling this um, economic um, tension um, and the need for mobility. And so K through 12, um, so current system is broken, dropouts, um, there's not, not, a lot, um, not a lot of people are ready for college or even more so for career. Um, there's some new schools that are, are exploring with personalized learning and competency-based, that idea of, you know, connected learning more or less. And sometimes, you know, there's wrong accountability measures and wrong credentials. So a good um, user story here is Isabel, a 10th grader. She struggles with some subjects in school. She nets out to average despite doing many things well. Um, she's involved in many activities, but there's no real way to keep her from falling behind, basically. 
you can also look at it from the teacher perspective. So you have Tawa, who's a seventh grade teacher. Um, she must teach to test, and there's no room to innovate or attend individual needs um, within her classroom. And so it's really hard for her to ultimately connect with those students beyond just trying to have them take the test and get the grades to make sure that she's performing. So looking at after school networks. So you know, after school networks are very strong within the U.S., um, really kind of shepherding that time from after school until um, parents have the opportunity to pick up their kids. There's a ton of learning going on there. There's a lot of activities. There's different types of learning that aren't necessarily reflected in school. But because of that, it ultimately doesn't count. It's not connected to school. And so it's hard for, you know, the, the individuals to actually legitimize that what they're learning because they, they, they see that it's not happening in school. So a good example of this is Eduardo. He's a seventh grader. He's a below average student in school. He's an emerging technologist um, and a mentor. But again, he just doesn't see that connection because it's not brought back to school where there's you know, math and science that it, it, there is no connection to that basically at the individual level. So looking at higher education and university, so higher ed is, is expensive. Um, it can be inconsistent. Um, there's a really big growing gap between universities and careers. So people that graduate and ultimately, you know, going out into the workforce and, and, and not being able to find a job. And, there, you know, there's ultimately a monopoly on credentials. And so really how... How, how do you help bridge that gap, more or less? And so a, a good user story of that is Ahmed. He's a recent grad, um, brings a transcript to a job interview, and is surprised that this means little to the employer and that there's no way to demonstrate the skills and stuff. So, so beyond just going to school, there's no way to really capture, okay, so what identifies Ahmed um, based on me or based on someone else, more or less? And then you have workforce. So workforce is very changing. It's not always enough to have a degree. Um, new skills are important in emerging. And it's, it's hard for employers to find the right match. And so, you know, people that are within the workforce, it's hard for them to really capitalize on all of the skills that they're learning while on the job so that it could translate to new jobs. And then on the employer side, it's really hard for them to find the right employees. So a good look at this is Sal. Sal's a displaced worker, um, does not know what skills he needs for a new job. Um, university is just not an option for him. But there's no way to really demonstrate the skills that he's, he's really learning here um, and ultimately be able to transcribe and show those um, to a potential new employer. Um, Joelle, she's a hiring manager, um, can't find the right people for the job. Um, she's hired you know, the wrong people at several costs and really wants better tools for assessing what candidates can do. So, so how do you go beyond a piece of paper and beyond just having to call you know, um, uh, basically recommendations that people have put and really get an idea that you know, ultimately has the evidence behind um, who, who you're dealing with? So these examples, I think they're, they're just a very good way um, to kind of paint the fact that education and workforce is changing. And we'll come back to them in a little bit as well, but ultimately just a good way to kind of get your, your feet wet. And so, so what this shows is that, you know, no single institution can prepare someone, that really it's this idea of a connected ecosystem of learning. So connected learning in the sense of how do you really capture everything that individual is doing? And at the ecosystem level is how does it go even beyond that individual user? So there's this very strong need for credentials that capture and communicate this. So again, this is ultimately where Open Badges comes into play. So really, uh, Open Badges at the heart is about reimagining credentials. But before we kind of talk a little bit more about Open Badges, it's important to take a look at what are badges, more or less. And so as many of us know, um, you know, starting off, so so badges, there's a lot of definition behind it, but when you really, really break it down to the core, badges are digital representations of a skill or achievement. So that's, you know, kind of a mouthful, but also very, um, very good descriptive of what it is. So it's digital representations of a skill or achievement. And now, you know, badges aren't necessarily a new concept. Um, they've been around for a while. And, you know, one of the first examples might just be scouting. Um, so Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, where, where it was about receiving badges based on, you know, the different activities you were involved in and the skills. And ultimately, it was shown with honor. People would wear it on their sash. Um, you know, I, I, my uh, fiance still talks about all of his badges that he got. So it's, it's definitely something that was ingrained to ultimately um, really show off the skills that you have, more or less. Um, but ultimately, what we've seen is that more and more that these, these badges that were physical badges really started to represent achievements on the web. So, uh, you know, a kind of an example where this surfaced or it, it really started to come out is um, Foursquare. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Foursquare, Foursquare is 
um, a, a, an application that's really based on your geolocation. So you can go and you can check into places. Um, and ultimately through this, um, you get um, you can unlock different badges based on the activity levels. And so what this started off though is as much more as a fun or social thing. And so the, the benefit here is, you know, you'll be incentive to check into places because you'd get the badges. And then also the businesses could offer um, discounts or, or offer incentives basically. Um, and it's also very social so that, you know, you can see where your friends are and so forth um, and ultimately potentially want to go there. Um, but these have more of a social status uh, overall. So what we saw, though, is that increasingly, you know, the, the skills that these badges were showing off were becoming more real. Um, and this is a great example of Stack Overflow. Um, and this is basically just a developer community. Um, and so ultimately, um, developers could go in. Um, they could, uh, you know, basically ask a question. It could be something as simple as, you know, I'm working on this new project in Node. I don't know how to do this specific thing to something very in-depth where here's my specific problem. Can you help? Um, and ultimately, it just it has a very active following. Um, engineers were going in, they were responding. And what they found is that you could clearly get a picture of that individual based on their level of responses. So you could tell what type of languages they knew. You could tell overall their their um, their affect, their their attitude. Were they a good um, you know, were they good at participating? Were they a good mentor and so forth? And so they created a very simple badge system. And this is exactly what their badge system had looked like is, is very simple to really try now start to capture um, all of that, the skills and the learning that were going on. Um, and, and so again, it was really starting to reflect these real schools and or these real skills. And in reality, this is really what employers and schools are looking for. And so, so they saw the value in it and they created what's called Careers 2.0, where basically was the employer login that employers like Google and so forth could basically um, pay to basically have be able to go in and search for these developers and see all of the badges that they've got. So be able to, to better understand their skill level beyond just a piece of paper, more or less. So it was really connecting the real the employers with actual real results, which is helping both the, the individual and the employer. So, so that, you know, kind of tells you, you know, what did they are, but, but why basically. And so, so in addition to really, um, you know, being able to compact, capture that complete learning path, which was, you know, demonstrated in some of the, the sectors that we talked about of, you know, like the disconnect between after school and school and, and, and the skills on the job and workforce and actually getting a job. So it's this idea of capturing the complete learning path. Um, and really being able to build and communicate your reputation and identity um, ultimately online. So how are you really capturing you as the individual and all of the knowledge that you have? Um, so it's really about um, reinventing um, or augmenting uh, existing credentials that are granular based, evidence based, or granular evidence based and transferable. And I think these are these are three, you know, if you could term them as kind of buzzwords um, to really just keep in the back of your mind when you're thinking about open badges is that it's basically they're granular, they have evidence behind them, and they ultimately are transferable. So really, it's about surface skills and competencies that are important and give people a way to plug in. So an option to capture the 21st skills that are going on. So, so really painting that picture of you as the individual so that you can have the badges and share them um, basically across your social sites or across all of your online entities as a means to really build your online reputation. So what's even better is that it's not just a single badge, but this idea of a badge ecosystem. So this idea that an individual can get badges from multiple places that are not siloed, and then ultimately be able to connect or to collect them so that they can share them out for, um, for advancement or opportunities. So with that, so in order to create this type of ecosystem, it's not just digital badges, it's open badges. And so it's this concept and, and very true with, um, you know, the, the Mozilla Foundation mentality is it's, it's really about creating this open source environment um, that different people can plug in as a means to benefit the individual user. So let's take a look about um, a, a really good um, graphic sketch that was um, done to really, really start to visualize this. So you have a learner a very cute learner with great glasses. Um, and basically the learner can get badges from all different areas. So job training, online learning, volunteer program. And basically she as the individual will be able to collect all of the badges from the different places. So noting that they're not siloed, so it's not that she can just get badges within job training and then they stay there, that she ultimately gets to take them back and save them in what's called her badge backpack. 
So from her badge backpack, she has the ability to collect all of the badges. Within her backpack, she has the ability to share them out if she wants. She also has the ability to organize them. So if she only wants to make some public and some private, that's fine. And she controls her preferences. So if she wants to show them all or she doesn't. So in this case, she wants to show them all. So she shows them on her um, social networks. She adds them, she gets the code and embeds them onto her website. Um, and then she um, works to build out a um, digital resume as a means to really show them off. So from these, basically these avenues, then she can use to help unlock advancement opportunities. So whether it's job opportunities, whether it's lifelong learning, or maybe it's even that she just realized that through some of the badges that she got, that there was potential opportunities that she didn't know about. So unlock this concept of pathways that ultimately kind of um, unlocks new opportunities for her as well. So with that, this is just the overall high level look at this. And so really where we come in and then what's called, you know, the, the Mozilla's Open Badge Infrastructure is building the plumbing. And so it's a very simple way to think about it, but it's ultimately we build the plumbing that basically um, from the top section of this graphic. So all of those, the job training, the online learning um, through our APIs that they can ultimately create badge systems that then the, e the user can easily share um, easily collect and share from her backpack. And ultimately, it's the backpack that's really the home of all the badges that they're getting. So in a sense, we, we really create um, the, the plumbing to make this process happen. So, um, you know, as, as very true to, again, the foundation um, of Mozilla, um, our um, APIs and our um, widgets and our backpacks are all free and open source. And so the beauty of this is, is the best way to think about it is we've basically built the foundation for you. So we've, we've built the key plumbing things that you need, but ultimately you can come on top of it and customize it basically so for how it makes sense and how it um, resonates with your, your sector more or less. And so um, what we've done is, you know, um, within the ecosystem. And so in addition to kind of creating that, that plumbing to make it all work, we realized that, you know, it's really important to make sure that within the ecosystem that a badge is more than just a badge. It's not just a pretty picture. And, and I like to say that a few times. It's not just a pretty picture um, because some people really get hung up on that. And although aesthetics is, is important when creating your badge system, really um, the nuts and bolts and what takes the most time is really diving into the ultimate um, criteria that needs to be behind it. So what we've done is we've come up with a set of things that need to be defined between, behind each badge. And so again, we've come up with the foundation and this is a really great graphic done by a member of our community to kind of visually show this. Um, but ultimately what we've done is come up with the key things that you as the issuing organization need to define. And so again, the beauty of this is that it's customizable so that based on what you're trying to badge, whether you're trying to badge a course that you're, you're offering, whether you're trying to badge, um, you know, an on the job type of training, whether you're trying to badge within a school system or so forth, you have the ability to customize it based on what you need. So, you know, just with that, um, I it's we've seen a, a huge increase in momentum um, on the topic of open badges. And I think at the core here is what people really realize is that there's this idea of connected learning. There's this idea of how do we how do we um, move beyond some of the broken systems this day and really empower people um, to to capture their learning and, and ultimately be able to unlock possibilities. And so how do we how do we innovate our ways of learning, teaching, and collecting um, while the world of technology continues to evolve around us? And so a year ago, we were at 98 issuers um, and 1,000 badges. Today, um, we're over 1,500 issuers and over 200,000 badges that are issued. Um, and so there's there's been quite the increase in people that are really um, grasping onto this concept um, as a means to really try to connect within their platforms and so forth. And so, so with that, so, you know, let's take a look who, so who are some of these, you know, 15, <clears throat> 1500 issuers um, and, and ultimately how are they using badges? Um, water break. <clears throat> so I love to do this by taking a look at the stories again, because I think it's important to connect the sectors that we talked through in the beginning to actually who's doing things in motion. So you take a look at Isabel. So is, uh, Isabel, again, 10th grader, struggles with some subjects, nets out to average, involved in many activities. Um, she can get badges for all of her activities that she's involved in. Um, basically, she can get rewarded for granular accomplishments and strengths. She can use a combination of the badges to better understand and guide her. And she can even include the badges on her college application. So the badges really help create that complete learning path and really capture everything she's doing. 
Same with Tawa. So again, seventh grade teacher must teach to test, no room to innovate or attend to individual needs and no insight into the student's interests within the current platform. Give her some badges and ultimately she can issue them for the skills and extra learning that's going on. So, so not by any means to, down, um, to, to downplay um, testing or, or to say that, that this is meant to over, overcome that, but more or less, how can it supplement it? How can you, how can you really define who that learner is by giving them more opportunities. So using badges as a way. And also from a teacher perspective, she herself could get badges. And so I think that, you know, that's something important that that too is that that with the innovative trends, it's important that teachers are staying on top of it too. So how can even teachers continue to um, increase their learning um, uh, throughout their lifetime and really be able to get credit for that? So a good example um, of through K through 12 is the Corno uh, Norco School District in California. Um, and, and what they realized is that their students weren't really motivated by A's and that badging coursework um, and that w there was really value in, in going beyond just the tests and the grades. And so what they've done is implemented a badging platform to um, really capture coursework skills, attendance, and, and they, they called theirs the passport program that's ultimately kind of um, going with you all through K through 12. So the goal is to complete your passport and then ultimately they're working with local colleges as a means to kind of help with the college application process. So um, this is just an example of kind of um, the login and then um, just to show off kind of some of the badge types that they did. And so in addition to, you know, having the badges within the classes, it's out, there's attendance badges, behavior badges, you know, that they, they took specific tests like SATs. And so, so it's really about showing off everything that they're doing as opposed to just getting a letter grade. So going to after school story, so Eduardo, seventh grader, below average student in school, again, emerging technologist, but just doesn't understand that this is legitimate learning because it's not connected to school. So badges um, will really help capture that learning um, and they can unlock different possibilities, um, you know, within mentoring um, and he can carry them back to school and share them with his interests, um, especially teachers, so that they have a better understanding of probably how to reach him um, and ultimately that empower him to feel like he is a good learner and that he is learning more or less. A good example of this is the Providence After School Alliance. And so um, they um, basically implemented a badge program for kind of expanding learning opportunities. And they've done a lot of work to help connect with after the, their after school program with the schools and local businesses. Um, and so um, they have programs on environmental science, sports, video games, and basically the local high school and community college um, accepts those badges um, ultimately for credit. And so they've, they've done a lot of work of not just building a badge system within the alliance, but really working outside of that to kind of build more of an ecosystem to make sure that it connects for the individual user. And so they have badges from all different things from, you know, um, being an intern, um, being on a debate club, um, and so forth. And so really trying to capture all of it is all of the skills that they are um, basically teaching and, and ultimately helping further within the after school network. Um, I will say that there's a there's a big interest coming out of this as well, given that there is a very, very strong after school network, even all throughout um, the US of of how do you how can you use badges? And so we're in talks with a lot of the after school networks um, to really kind of further this along. Um, and then, um, you know, we um, there was a, a, a White House Google Hangout earlier this year in which one of the students that went through this program um, spoke to how badges influenced him. Um, and it was actually really powerful. It was, you know, talking about how he, um, you know, came into the after school network. And when they mentioned the concept of badges, he was a little unsure. He, you know, it was like, sure, you know, I'll get a badge for that. But then really started to see that it, it showed him more of his interests and it was able to unlock potential um, you know, new things for him. And then ultimately, um, he was able to use that to get into um, to college. And so, so it was it was a really great story um, as well to kind of show that how, how it really is working to connect um, at the and help the individual level. Um, so university, so Ahmed, again, brings job transcripts, surprised that, the, that this means little to his employer, and that there's no way um, to demonstrate um, skills or granular learning. So badges can ultimately help him um, capture who he is and everything that he's done, and give him the opportunity to, to share it on um, a digital resume and a prospective employer. So it, it tells his complete um, story so that you know, he has differences than the other person who just threw their resume down um, from the university and so forth. And so that it, it really is more just beyond the classes he took and the grades that he got. 
So um, a good example, Purdue University. So um, within one of their graduate programs, um, they realized that there was this really big disconnect between going through the, the specific courses that were isolated as part of the program, but then all of the extra things basically that they included. And so that's labs, that's group projects, that's internships and so forth. And they realized that, you know, on twofold, on the student's perspective, it was really hard for that student to 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 show off that they were doing all of that. But then on the teacher perspective, it was hard for them to know everything that the student was doing, more or less. And so they created a badge platform. And again, they also called this a, a, a passport program um, that captured all the, the skills and learning that were going on outside of the classes. So they still had the same curriculum, but they, they implemented the badge system around it. And so this is just an example of, um, as the instructor, you had a really easy way um, to um, basically pull in and create your badges um, if you had new things that you wanted to badge, um, or ultimately um, to be able to, to figure out um, what made sense for your classes. Um, and then the students could ultimately re get rewarded of these badges um, based on their, um, on their performance or their activity levels, and then be able to collect them. And so, you know, this is just a good quote, and I'm not going to go through it in full detail, but from the um, vice president of information of technology was just really hitting on the fact of what I said is that there was so much going on within these graduate courses that, that, that they just did not, there was no complete picture. And that ultimately the Passport app that they've created gives faculty and advisors another way to recognize and validate those skills for the student, and then gives a way for the student to really show off everything that they've gotten within their graduate program. And I will say that they've seen so much um, you know, success from these initial pilot projects that they're actually looking of how they can embed badges even further into the curriculum um, to complement what's going um, as opposed to just capturing everything on the outside. Another good example um, is open education. Um, uh, within open education is called Code School. And so th there's a good amount of these um, that have popped up that are, um, you know, really about online courses to, to further specific skills. And, and I, I think engineering is an important one to call out, um, given the fact that a lot of today's engineers, software engineers, are self-taught. Um, and that's because, you know, um, there's there's always new languages emerging. There's always new things. And so even if they went through formal education um, for for software engineering, that that really there's there's this constant learning path. And so a lot of times you have people that are applying for jobs that that are that as an employer, you're not surprised that that person says that they were self-taught and so forth. And so so this, you know, Code School was one that was working with um, a lot of developers to improve their skills and teach new ones. And so they implemented badges again so that that individual could really show off what they do. And again, remember, the badges are evidence based. And so what that means is as they get if I get the, um, you know, Ruby path badge that when I put that on my resume or my digital resume or on my website that the employer can come see that, click through and see what the evidence is behind that. So see why I have that badge more or less. Um, two more examples to throw out here that I, I don't have captured in slides, but I think it's important to note is that, um, you know, um, the the increase in um, the MOOC classes as well um, is, 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 you know, been over the last few years and is at an all time high. And so we're working with uh, many of the platforms to use badges to capture that as well, um, given the fact that a lot of times um, the, the thing you get after completing a MOOC is a PDF certificate. And so, so we've been working um, with some of those platforms in general to really implement badges. And we had our first MOOC um, this year um, using the Blackboard platform, um, and we, we issued badges for that as well. And so, so definitely an increase of that. Um, in addition, we've seen that there's um, an increase for universities to um, start to think about how they can use um, badges within um, acceptance. So DePaul University um, announced in June of this year that they were really going to start to um, implement a plan and work with it so that students, when they um, applied for college, could include their badges. Um, and that from that, based on the you know certain badges that those students came in with, they ultimately could use them to skip some intro classes. Um, and so, so just some ideas of different ways that universities are ultimately working with badges. For the workforce, so again, Sal displaced, um, does not, um, doesn't know what skills he needs for the new job, has no way to demonstrate his existing skills. And so, um, you know, he can get badges for everything he already has. And so view badges, um, you know, for, for a particular um, industry. And so ultimately open, you know, different pathways um, to see what opportunities are, are there um, and then be able to, again, show off the skills he's getting on the job. So a good example of this is Manufacturing Institute. So it's an organization that's, uh, again, really dedicated to connecting employers um, and um, the individual workers. 
And so um, they've implemented a badge system that's really about using badges to define the skills that are important to the industry. So they go out to the employers and say, okay, what, what skills do you need for this specific job? And then from there, they help back out a badge system that so that when an individual comes in and starts earning badges, that, that those badges can unlock different opportunities so that they end up at the end job. So it's basically a win-win for the people that are going through the system to earn badges and then connecting them with a job at the end and the employer getting exactly what they need. Um, so it, it definitely just ties right in. And so this is just a quick example. So, example. so again, from the student perspective, you're getting badges as you're you're developing new skills and you're involved um, and that ultimately you get potential recommendations of other badges you could unlock. So, so ultimately, you know, um, how could you, um, how, what new possibilities lie um, through each badge that you get. And then from the manufacturing perspective, again, you're getting the talent that you need. You're getting the people with the skills that you've defined are worth, um, are needed for that position. Um, this is another example, and I apologize, this slide, you, you need to bust out your magnifying glass for this one, but we'll make sure you get the deck so you can take a little bit for, uh, further of a look. But um, so, so again, Workforce IO, same concept, really use badging. I mean, so this is an example of their selector packer, packer um, type of uh, role. So basically, they broke out all the key things that are needed in order to do this, and so that the information behind the badge that you get when you're able to do that and so forth. Um, another good example here to um, just to, to verbally discuss is um, uh, uh, veterans. And so a lot of times um, there's been an increase in, um, you know, veterans uh, getting a lot of on the job training um, when they're they're in, um, you know, at, at war, on the ground and so forth, and then coming um, back home and this disconnect of getting jobs because, you know, they've dedicated most of their time to really being in the moment and learning those those tasks. And so, so there's there's been a, a big influx of this interest in using badges for vets, um, and there's been a few programs. The manufacturing um, organization has been working with it, but then there's been another one that popped out called Badges for Vets, um, and 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 really it's that concept of how how can we show off the skills that all of the veterans have got, and then directly connect them to jobs. So just a just a really good. Um, just, you know, a fundamentally really about improving and helping lives um, through this concept of badging. Um, also, again, so take it from the employer side. And I think, you know, the employer side is a really big piece that um, we are really researching right now, um, as there's a lot of value um, from there, because it's a win if you know exactly what the employer wants, because you can help make sure that you're, you're guiding people in that direction. So you're creating pathways for them there. Um, but, you know, just some examples of of the employer piece. And so again, Joelle can't find the right um, people for the job. It's been costly. Um, so she ultimately could search through candidates of badges. So um, use the information. So again, the evidence behind the badge um, to really um, easily vet the candidate skills, you know, and again, the, the, the information that's behind the badge is set up by the issuing organization. And so you get questions sometimes of how are badges valid and so forth. And that really lies on the issuing organization to make sure that there's integrity in their system so that when they're creating badges, that there's, there's a reason of why they're creating badges and that it ultimately shows off something that the learner gets. And so, um, so a good example, again, Careers 2.0, which I mentioned in the beginning, um, based off Stack Overflow's badge system, is that people can go in, um, employers and um, can go in and ultimately um, really get a good overview of what those individuals do um, and see the badges that they have. Um, another one is Mozilla. And so a big reason of why, um, you know, we really got interested in the concept of open badges um, a while ago, too, is or why Mozilla got interested in is, is again they were looking for really good development talent and so they you know being a technology site um really needed um strong engineers um and you know struggled to find them especially just because again a lot of engineers are self-taught or aren't you know there's not a really good way to demonstrate the skills that they have without having them go through multiple tests and so forth and so really use badges as a way to um to uh help with that from an hr perspective so that kind of walks through all of the different sectors and just gives you a taste of all of the different issuing organizations. I will say that we're doing a lot of efforts um, and tease on this a little bit more at the end, but, but the goal of 2014 is that there will be a good, easy home for you of someone who's interested in, in creating a badge system to, to be able to visually see who else is doing it. And so right now we have lists off our, our website of who's doing it, but this concept of being able to go no matter where you are in the world, let's say, 
you know, you're in the UK, but you'd easily be able to go and see who else in the UK is working with open badges and, and ultimately how are they working with open badges. We're also doing a lot right now to, to build up some key case studies um, so that we can really start to surface some of the, the best practices, both benefits and challenges within issuing a platform or issuing badges um, so that, that, that new people really have a, a good groundwork. So, um, but with that, I, I, I want to give you a little background on one of the biggest projects that we worked on this year um, to kind of just show you how a badge system can go beyond just offering a few badges within your classroom or so forth, and really just kind of building this concept of, of the overall badge ecosystem. And so the Chicago Summer of Learning was a project um, that we worked on. Um, I think we started in probably about mid-February, um, March timeframe, um, and launched right before the summer. So it, so it went pretty fast. Um, but basically, it was about how do we leverage um, eight weeks? So one summer in the city of Chicago that was um, initiated by the, the mayor's office. Um, and, and basically, their primary focus was to address summer dropout. And so that they knew that they had a big disconnect of people that were in school um, and leaving school in the spring and then coming back into the fall and teachers being frustrated because they had to, you know, the students didn't do anything over the summer or there was no way to see what the students did over the summer. Um, and so, and also, you know, the city of Chicago has its areas um, of, of, of poverty and the areas where there, you know, was um, increased in, uh, in, you know, I don't know, crime and so forth within those months where students were in school. And so, you know, and, and even in some cases that you'd have parents who would drop kids off at the library and, and that was considered daycare. And so, so again, this, this idea of how can we mobilize the city to really foster a collaborative environment and really help these students and individuals throughout the summer months. So basically, their their main things from the governor's office or from the mayor's office, his his primary focus is with this concept of STEAM, so science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Um, and and what we did is is we teamed up with some members of the city um, and really helped them think about okay, how do we create this ecosystem? And so we worked with over a hundred organizations. And there was three core team members on the ground in Chicago that were doing this. And basically what we did is we worked with um, each organization to help them determine what badges made sense for their activities. So this could be museums, this could be the parks, this could be the libraries, um, all bunch of organizations across the city that ultimately were offering initiatives or summer initiatives for students, basically, um, and created this badge system that ultimately um, the individuals could come in, see about new badges, but they could also earn badges when they were in those environments and so forth. And so I have a really great video. I'm not going to play it just because sound quality hasn't been the best when we're doing these recordings, but I'm keeping it in here because when we circulate the slides, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at this because it's about a minute and 42 seconds of really diving in from the student perspective of what badges have done. So just a really good way to kind of visualize what I'm talking about, but I'll continue to talk. And so, so here's an example of the different types of badges. Um, and again, it was across multiple different organizations, and it was really based up to that organization to, to really define what they wanted to badge, more or less. And where we came in with this project is that we really helped build the infrastructure. So beyond just our APIs, these, this, a project of this size needed its own website. It needed its own back end where people could come in and approve the badges. And it also needed an opportunity to be able to reach students that were under 13. And so dealing with certain legalities and so forth is how do you reach students that aren't necessarily of age and that need parental um, uh acceptance um, or approval to be engaged. And so, so we, we helped build a bunch of these tools to really solve this. And, um, and, and within the badge system too, um, what we did was we, we worked with all of the badges that we got from over the hundred organizations and really helped create this badge uh, uh, like leveling up system more or less. And the concept here was it was, it was trying to create, um, you know, um, in, in, engagement throughout and give people the opportunity that once they get the first badges, they can realize what next badges they need to get to level two to level three. And ultimately, the final level was to unlock the city mayor's badge, um, which would give you access to the closing summer party, which there was, you know, I think some famous people there and it was really the demo. So it was this idea of how can we how can we continue to encourage engagement throughout the entire summer. So Overall, I would say, um, you know, it was a very successful summer. Um, we had 23,000 um, learners that went through the eight-week program. Um, over 110,000 badges were issued. 
Um, and, and ultimately, um, you know, we, we basically created this concept that's really growing. And so the idea now, and, and you'll see if, if you, if you check out the, the Chicago Summer of Learning, they've actually done some work to kind of tweak their logos and so forth because their, their idea was that it doesn't stop in the summer. Like, why can't we do things in the winter break and so forth and just really keep this momentum of connected learning outside of the school system that feeds back into the school system. So the students could go back with their badges in the fall and the teachers would know what learning's gone on. It could unlock different opportunities. It could unlock internship opportunities and so forth. And so, so again, it was just this, this concept of how can we mobilize all of these different organizations with one foundational goal, which is really this concept of connected learning and helping the individuals um, by bettering their lives. And so, um, so overall, uh, just a, a really good example to show. And, 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 and again, not every badge system is this detailed and so forth, but just really a good idea for to show the power of actually what it can be. So just in summary, so really open badges are digital credentials for the modern age. Um, they're evidence-based and verified. Um, they're really about recognizing skills and achievements. So how do we recognize all of the skills and achievements that fall outside of the traditional ways of recognition um, and, and help and empower that individual to collect it across their lifetime. So build up a portfolio of what you do and know and, and ultimately carry that so that digital currency with you across the web. So how do you put it on your different profiles and, and really start to create, you know, in addition to um, just straight your own, you know, I did this or I'm good at this. Like, how is there is there validity behind it? How how are you really showing it off and so forth? Um, so with that, I will um, just give you a little tease of kind of um, some of our key initiatives um, based on some of the foundation that I've talked about. Um, and 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 one in particular is this idea of a badge kit. Um, and so you just heard me talk about City of Chicago, and you heard me talk about all the different tools that we had to create. And what we realized is that um, you know there's there's a there's a value, a very big value in really packaging those tools so that they're easy for anyone to come in, whether you're a city, whether you are a, uh, a big organization, whether you are an individual teacher within a classroom. And so um, what we've done is um, we are in 2014, probably um, uh, right around March 2014, we're getting ready to launch this idea of Badge Kit. And Badge Kit will basically be all of the key fundamental tools that you will need to get up and operational with your badging platform. So again, this could be one badge, this could be multiple badges, but really it's so taking from today's conversation and ultimately defining, you know, and helping you, guiding you through what's next. And a big reason what we realize is that that we there's this gap. There really is a gap of us having a conversation today. And you know, we're always here. I'm gonna go over the channels of how you can reach us in, in just a minute. Um, but really kind of helping you go to the next step. And there are some community-driven platforms for sure, but a lot of what we found is that they were either, um, a lot of the community ones weren't as free and they were starting to get more siloed. So our concept was is build the foundational tools that then people can still come in and plug and play off of them. Um, and, and you as the individual can choose which tools that you need. So maybe you only need the issuing tool or maybe you only need the building tool that helps you design the badges um, and that you're working with another issuing platform. And so again, the concept of these is they will be individual standalone tools that you can use um, by themselves or you can use as a whole. And so again, this is coming in um, March of 2014. And so we're really looking forward to this because we think it's it's definitely something that um, the growing ecosystem needs. Um, in addition, um, this idea of badge the world. And so part of this is, 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 is kind of the, a, a campaign, but in, in reality, our, our goal of this is this really come, becomes the home for you as the community. And so ultimately you can go and you can isolate down to whether you're in a specific state or whether you know, you're in a different country and see who else is doing it and get a little profile of their story and what they have so that you can ultimately, you know, maybe you wanna contact them or maybe you wanna just read up on them and see what they did as a means to really kind of help you take the next step. And, and where this concept was born is um, there's a great program by an, an amazing company called Digital Me in the UK that's really leading the way on um, on open badges and, and, and implementing open badges within school systems. And they came up with this concept of Badge the UK. And so it was really getting people to commit to working with badges. So that could be commit to issuing badges, commit to researching badges and so forth, but, but getting them to, to, to take the commitment that they will um, take the next step. And so at a recent event we had, we had a big map up that people could come and there was over 1400 people at this event and they could ultimately, you know, 
literally physically write out what their commitment was and post it on this map. And before you knew it, we had this plethora of people all across the world saying that they wanted to work with badges. We had someone come up that said they wanted to badge, um, you know, India, like, you know, really look within a lot of their systems and so forth. And so so again, it, it's this, the thought of this is, is it will ultimately um, be integrated into the Open Badges properties, but really be a home for you as an individual, as an organization, to ultimately come and make the commitment to work uh, with badges and then be able to easily see who else is going to work with badges, more or less, or who else is working with badges as a means, again, to really build this ecosystem, more or less. So with that, I have um, gone a little bit longer than I anticipated, so um, about 45 minutes of your time. Um, I like to just throw this up, and again, you will have these slides so you can have this information, but these are really good ways to connect with us. And so again, being open source, we are very we, we work in the open, we talk about things even before they're fully baked, and the reason why is we have a very active community, and uh, what we do, we want to be driven by our community. And so here's a good ways to plug in with our community. And so first of all is the community call. So this happens every Wednesday at um, 12 p.m. This is very good for new people. Um, it's, it's a general call. Um, and basically the idea here is that um, there's different um, speakers that are, 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 um, are featured every week that are talking about how they're working with badges. So again, this is all different levels. This could be an individual teacher. This could be a bigger organization. Um, uh, really talking about it. Um, it's a really good time to ask questions specifically to the team. So most of the team is on the full time. Um, and so that you really have an opportunity to connect um, for a full hour um, where you're asking questions in line. Um, and it's just, it's a good opportunity to see what's going on with the ecosystem. Again, this is pretty high level. Um, and, and so even being new, we welcome you with open arms. Um, and it's just really about, you know, getting your feet in a little bit deeper. In addition, we have a Google group, um, and this is very active. And again, this is a really good place, even if you have questions that you don't want to wait till next Wednesday, you can post in the Google group. Um, it goes to pretty much everyone on the Open Badges team, but it also has a really big following across the community as well. Oftentimes, you find very general things in here, and sometimes you find very detailed. It's purely based on, on what it is. Um, also, our blog. So um, we have a great blog, a Tumblr. Um, uh, Jade, who's our program coordinator, um, is fantastic. Uh, she's really good at not only letting you know what the team is doing, but really capturing what's going on in the ecosystem. So who else has just issued badges? Um, and, and really, um, she does a great digest every single Friday um, to kind of keep you up um, to, to, uh, to speed on what's going on with that week, knowing everybody's pretty busy and there's a million sites to be looking at. Um, but really just definitely something to, to, to um, uh, add to your, um, to your reader or whatever. Um, and lastly, um, email. So we're always available. So our email at badges at Mozilla Foundation, um, that's connected to all the key people who can provide you with the answers you need, whether it's technology, whether it's general, whether it's partnerships and so forth. Um, and we are here. Um, that's our job at Mozilla, again, is, is um, we have the, the tech side of the team who's really about building the foundational tools. And then you have us that's more on the, the community driven side of the team that's really about um, uh, having conversations like today, you know, speaking the word of open badges and really listening in, keeping a pulse on our community so that we ultimately can make sure that we're providing, providing the foundation and the education that you need um, to really um, work further with open badges. So with that, I want to first off thank you um, for um, listening to this. Um, it was, um, it's always great to um, walk people through this because I think there's just a wealth of information. Um, I'm going to um, just take a quick look through questions um, and just give people a question time. If you have questions, um, there's a, a little great question uh, feature in um, the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if you would like to type in questions, I will um, I'll, I'll save a few minutes to go through and answer them. Um, as always, again, we're, we're always available. You can reach us at badges at Mozilla Foundation if your question is more on a personal level. Um, we really like to do this um, intro webinar, again, just to give you a general basis. Um, if you would like to touch base um, with us to really just talk about your individual um, platform or your individual sector or even just bounce ideas off, we're always uh, available for that as well. So again, you can just ping us at badges at mozillafoundation.org. Um, but overall, that's it. I mean, um, again, there's there's a, a wealth of information to digest. So I, I hope that this was beneficial today. Um, and we will make sure that you get a copy of the slides, um, uh, you know, by tomorrow um, morning at the latest um, and a link to the, the recording um, so that you can uh, share it with other people within your team or just, you know, take another digest um, when you have a little more time. 
So with that, I'm going to pause talking a little bit um, and just take a moment. If people have questions, um, please feel free. So it looks like we have one question. Um, so we have a, this is a great question. So we have a great question um, saying, I'm curious about the technology background that someone would need to create these badges. I'm working with a smaller organization, and I'm not sure where to begin creating these or the background knowledge I need. It's a very, very great question. So this is a big reason of why we are creating Badge Kit um, in 2014 is really to help you with things like this. And so, you know, we always say that that some technical um, skills are needed um, in order to do this, um, but there are a lot of tools that already exist out there. And so um, there's different community driven platforms that can help you through the full process. Um, and then if you're if you think your timing is more in the beginning of next year, um, Badge Kit is going to help you with this. And what I mean is that there'll be tools very similar to the, the Purdue Passport program that I just showed you, where you can log in and easily design your own badge um, by, you know, pulling in a graphic and so forth. Um, but there are some really great community driven ones that exist today. And so um, we'll make sure um, in our follow up email um, to go ahead and just um, pop in a link to a chart that the community has created that kind of goes through a lot of the tech resources um, that are available in case you don't have a tech person or you do, are not have access to a designer. Um, so, I, so I think it's, I know you can take a look at what's existing out there, but then also know that if your timing is in the beginning of the year, that we're going to be coming up with the, the free version of things to kind of help through this process. But great question overall. Um, and, I, and I think that's one of our biggest goals is, is to, to make it as simple as possible um, to kind of help you go from the idea conception to really the next steps. I will say that we have a, a 201 web webinar where I start to dive in a little bit to um, system design. And so I mentioned today that um, badge system design is probably the hardest piece. So even harder than the design and the, the technology piece, which actually given tools is pretty simple. But badge design is really thinking about, okay, so what makes sense for my sector? And you know, when we we encourage people that it's great that you know if people say, oh, I have this course, I want to badge this. That's that's great. We encourage you to do that. But we also encourage you to think further along. Do you think you'll have additional courses? Do you think that there might be an opportunity to have more than one badge with a course and so forth? So so how do you really start to think of it from a system perspective? Um, and we recently just did a webinar on that too. So um, we'll make sure to include that link um, in case you want to take a look at that as well. But great question, thank you. So it looks like so far we're just getting everybody saying um, that no questions, this has been really informative, which is great, that's our goal. Um, also a great question, so um, are there common badges in specific fields? Um, so to date, most of the badges have all been <clears throat> directed by the individual issuing organization. Um, what we are currently working on is this idea of um, pathways. And so really helping to work with specific fields, so healthcare, um, more of a manufacturing type of field to come up with this concept of are there, are there core badges that can be used across. Um, and so this is something we're definitely exploring. Um, right now, most of the badges live are, are basically up to the issuing organization, but it's definitely something that, that and even our, our, the head of our badge system design has been leading exercises on this topic of, you know, can you, can you create some type of core badges that could be replicated across different type of issuing platforms? And so, so more information I'd say to come on that. Um, as of today, um, you know, I think the very first instance that we're, we're going to find is that a lot of the cities are really interested. We have about nine to 10 cities that are interested in doing the Chicago Summer of Learning program. Um, and a lot of them would be kind of working off some of the, the same type of um, commonality between uh, their badge systems. Um, but that, that's all a little bit in the research phase right now. Any other questions? I'll just pause for um, just about a, an additional minute or so to see if anybody has anything. All right. Well, it looks like we have we have a quiet group, and that's totally fine. Um, as always, again, uh, please you know do not hesitate to reach out. Um, we I highly encourage you to dip your toes into some of our um, community driven channels. Um, again, even if it's just passive, if you want to learn a little bit more, um, really really good opportunities. Um, and at at the very least, check out our blog so you can read a little bit more about what's going on. Um, just, just really good ways to help you connect, um, to, to feel part of our community, even at the very initial research type of phase. So 
Um, with that, I want to thank everybody um, for joining us today. Um, it's been really great. Um, we will, again, make sure we've um, got your, your email addresses through the um, sign up form. So we'll make sure to circulate this and then we'll also post it um, on SlideShare and on Twitter so that you can always come back to it as well. Um, so with that, thank you. I hope everyone has a um, wonderful rest of the week and um, has a, a, a lovely holiday season that is upon us. Um, and we look forward to um, having you as part of our community. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>